Good morning. Welcome to this episode of Refill with Randy. Grab your favorite cup, fill it up, and let's start this day right together. together. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. I'm here with my friend Dan Conrad. Mm -hmm. And um, Dan has uh, just a, a unique history as well as something that he's really felt led to do as part of uh, Orleans County and a part of our community here in Albion. And so I just want to let uh, Dan share a little bit about that today. Yes, th thank you for inviting me and allowing me to come on. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to start with a little bit about what I'm doing now is um, I'm on several boards, several committees in the area, mm -hmm. um, you know, trying to help out and trying to more or less help out the youth because everybody says youth is tomorrow, so why not try to help them out more? Yeah. You know, and uh, what kind of led me to that is, you know, as as I was growing up, I was a bit of a, not troublemaker, but I did my share of wrongs and. You know, I definitely hurt a lot of people, you know, in my younger years, even though my parents were great, married 40 years now and, you know, gave me everything I had. I still went off the beaten path some and definitely have hurt a lot of people in my past. And now I'm trying to make up for it. Yeah, I've lost friends. I've lost relationships over it, but I've lived, I've learned, and I have overcome all that. Um, a lot of decisions I've made. You know, a lot of friends that I thought were mine, you know, were friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just seem to forget that friends are there, but your true friends are the ones that want to see you succeed. Yes. You know, you want to be, you, you want to have the people around you that want to see you succeed, not the ones that want to see you sit idle. Because those ones are the toxic ones, and those are the ones that aren't going to get you anywhere. So no matter if you're into drugs, if you're into drinking, if you're into those bad habits and you have your friends around, just stop and think for a second. Would they be there for you if you quit? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's what I tend to found out the hard way was I found out who my trends, two of my true friends really were. And yeah, I lost some of them, still never got them back. And I still got some of my true friends, you know, and, and it's a tough, it's a tough thing to go through. But sometimes you have to do that. And, you know, at my darkest point. I was basically stared in the face by my young daughter and I didn't want to lose her for the way I was acting and it came to the point to where I was afraid I was going to lose her if I didn't change my ways. So, you know, I slowly started changing my ways with some stuff and I was still, you know, not being that people friendly and, you know, being that angry guy all up inside of me. And, you know, it just, it came to a point to where I said enough is enough and I just need to let it all out and then start doing right by people. And now, you know, I'm out in the community doing what I can do. It, it's, it's certainly true. You find out, you know, who those true friends, as you say, are by, mm -hmm. by those that want to see you rise up and not those that want to keep you down. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, you know, at that young age, you know, I was there, uh, who you hang out with, really determines a lot of what you do mm -hmm. and yeah. you know I had some friends that um, you know helped me grow and I had other friends that um, I was growing into something I, I didn't really want to be myself and so uh, I, I was thankful that when I came to that point when I became a Christian really started to make changes in my life that some of those who uh, we were making those poor choices together uh, made the good choice together as well and still have friends today but yeah um but it's tough and mm -hmm. it's tough for teens because they don't want to you know lose friends they're trying to figure out who they are yeah what they're doing and uh so what would you say to a teen today that you were um you know mentoring uh what, what are some things that that you've learned kind of along this road 
that you would uh, um, share with them. Yeah, I, I understand, you know, kids will be kids mm -hmm. and, and, and they want to do what they want to do. But what a lot of kids don't realize is how you act now is going to reflect you in your future. Whether it's how people are going to look at you, how, you know, what your future will entail. You know, if you drop out of high school, if you get involved with drugs, if you start drinking, you know, you don't realize the consequences are going to happen later down the road. You think, yeah, I'll, I'll just stop now and I'll be fine. You know, it doesn't seem to always be the case because your past will always haunt you. Your past follows you, but it's how you determine how you get over that is what really, you know, how you can really overcome all that. And, and as teens, I think they really need to, you know, take a step back and really do some deep thinking and say, are these friends here for me because of what I have, what I do? Do I have money? Do I have the car? Do I have the video games that they want? Am I the popular kid in school? Is that why these kids want to attach themselves to me? It shouldn't be what you have. It should be what's inside of you is what matters. And that's what makes true friends is being there for you for who you truly are, not what you have. Yeah, we, we live in a culture of likes yeah. and follows, which is very difficult. Um, but also, going along with what you were saying, you know, we live in a culture where things that you may have done 20 years ago or said or texted 10 years ago, it's going to come back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. We're in an age where everything that you have ever said and done yeah. is brought back up. Yeah. You know, even your books from 60 years ago, they're bringing up with some of the politicians. Mm -hmm. um, and it's unfortunate that we get pigeonholed by some of the dumb things that we've done, you know, and, and I think it's fair to call them dumb. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when, uh, when our brains are not fully developed, you know, when we are uh, uh, young men, young women. Um, <clears throat> but I know for me as a parent, it's very difficult for me to relay that, especially to my 16 year old son. Mm -hmm. Um, because he thinks that I, you know, have never been where he is and I just don't know what's cool anymore, things yeah. like that. But, you know, you have a, you have a unique place to be able to speak into some of these teens' lives by saying, look at, uh, this is what I did. This is how it followed me through the years. Mm -hmm. And here's what I'm doing now. I'm taking responsibility, but you could save yourself a whole lot of regret if you learn some of these lessons now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I've noticed, even with jobs, it's like you get a good job, you're making money, and you're in that dark place in your life. You have the money, say you have the drugs, you have the alcohol around you. And whether you're a guy or a girl, you have the opposite sex always around you. Like a guy, you know, you beat your chest up high saying, I have the money, I have this, I have all these girls around me. But five years down the road, is that how you want your life? Or do you want your life turned around? Do you, do you want to be the kind of guy that goes home to your family every day? that takes care of your kids or do you want that life because yes it's very hard to break it but once you break it it's well worth it mm -hmm. and, and it takes a lot it takes a lot of self-confidence and courage within yourself to break it and when you're trying to break that cycle you really find out who, what family members are there what friends are there to try to help you well one of the uh, ways I've gotten to know you is just I see your name a lot throughout the community and things going on. Um, one of the things more recently during this quarantine, unfortunately, your um, your mother was uh, one who contracted COVID mm -hmm. as she was working there at the villages and was really kind of hit and miss for a little while there. Went mm -hmm. on the ventilator, but thank, yeah. um, thank the Lord she's doing much better now, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, she's doing much better yeah. and a lot of prayers. And, and that's another yeah. thing that I can say is, you know, as I've changed my life, I've noticed more people are there for me now than they were before. Like when we were on quarantine, we couldn't leave the house. We had people bringing us food. We had people reaching out to us. You, you know, before when I was at that dark place, like I keep going to is I didn't. I, yes, I had people there, but they weren't true. No. You, you know, when when you grow up and when you go through situations, you find out who is really there, who your true friends really are. And, you know, we thank God for all the prayers and stuff that we had. You know, I think when we get in dark places, we also, we think God's not there, but oftentimes it's, we've kind of put uh, a shield around us. Yeah. And so we just don't see it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, going back to the kids, uh, something else that you've uh, started during this time, which I, I think it's just, 
it's just a neat thing. You know what? I, I, I always tell people when it comes to serving others, you don't have to have this big elaborate plan. All you have to do is see a need mm -hmm. and fill it. And so just share a little bit about what you've been doing recently. Oh, with the, the summer fun buckets yeah. is it started with my youth fishing derby mm -hmm. because every year I do that and I get donations coming. And unfortunately due to COVID and everybody knows everything got canceled. I had to scale back and cancel that this year, which I didn't want to. But anyways, I had all this donated money. So I reached out to this to everybody that had donated money and I said, what would you like done with it? Every single one of the response was, we like what you do with kids, do as you want to, with it. do as you wish. So, you know, as I really thought about it, I see on Facebook and social media, you had the beer fairy, you got the meat, you got the wine, you got all these, but I really didn't see anything for kids. Mm -hmm. So I said, why not start something for kids? So I went to the dollar store, I got the dollar buckets with the shovels on them, and I just started getting all kinds of like bubble, sidewalk, chalk, kites, um, all kinds of stuff for kids. And I just started handing them out to kids. And as I started doing that, the community started coming back to me and I've had over $500 donated since I started doing this to keep it going. That's awesome. And just yesterday I had more sidewalk shop, mm -hmm. more kites, more buckets donated. And, and, and that's very warming that people are donating stuff to keep it going. And within a couple of weeks, I think I've delivered, what, 26 buckets to kids. That's fantastic. And, and I'm doing that all over the county. And just the kids are just so overwhelming. Like I had one lady, she messaged me about a guy and two kids. I delivered it to them. And she messaged me two days later and was like, I see the impact you put on those kids. I want to help that more. Here's a $300 check. Just, <laughs> out of, you know, just because, and, and even when people donate, I still, even though they don't say it, they need it. I take pictures of the receipts. I take pictures of everything. And then I started ordering like online through Amazon Oriental Trading to get more bulk stuff. I was going to say, you can get more stuff for less money. Yeah. 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 So I've been hitting that up. And <clears throat> I have quite the collection at the house and, you know, and. So if, um, if someone wants to donate, wants to give money, or if they know someone that could use one of the buckets, yes, because you're always looking for ideas of who to bring them to, mm -hmm. um, what, they sh what should they do in order to contact you? Um, they can either send me a message on Facebook, they can give me a call, they can send me an email, all my stuff's all over social media. Okay. Um, I can and either, I'll put them up on the screen here? Yeah, yeah, I can give you my cell phone number, okay. email address, Facebook. You know, however anybody wants to get a hold of me they can well it's, it's fantastic um show some pictures here of just what one of the baskets looks like and, and you said that's not even everything that's typically in one mm -hmm. um but just a great idea as kids are uh, home they're not able to be with their friends things are starting to lift but especially when uh, everyone's home either by themselves or with their siblings you know what, what a great thing not only for kids but also for uh, parents as well. Mm -hmm. I said everything I saw in there I, I could see my kids uh, uh, using especially the younger ones. Yeah. Um, so if you want to be a part of this and uh, you want to join Dan whether it's just supporting or if you have some um, maybe some kids in your neighborhood that you would like to uh, point him toward uh, we'll have the contact information and if you see a need you don't have to wait for someone else to come along you don't have to create a whole organization, you can meet that need. Yes. And uh, and, and you, you weren't even looking for donations, but no. you know what, if you're, if you're doing something uh, tangible love like God provides. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and if anybody has any ideas that they just need like a little kickstart, feel free to reach out to me mm -hmm. and I can help you. I, I'm also a member of the Albany Lions Club, which you do a lot, which this Friday, we're actually cooking lunch for the Albany Police Department, the Sheriff's and State Troopers, local law enforcement. Very good. So I put that together. Um, we're doing that this Friday behind my parents' house, which will be nice for the law enforcement show the blue that we actually have their back. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'll be with the, the sheriffs. We have our chaplains meeting next Tuesday and um, venturing with them. Uh, it, it's a difficult time for, for a lot of people throughout. Mm -hmm. um, but we live in a community. We're part of a community. And, you know, even uh, Jesus said it was, it was hard to... Uh, be a prophet in your own town. But as I've shared with you, I, I think it's powerful when people know who you were mm -hmm. and now they see who you are. Yeah. And it says a lot and it can say a lot to the teens. And so um, I thank uh, Dan for being on today. And I encourage you, if there's anything you can do, um, contact, donate, 
uh, give a gift or start something up on your own. Yes. Have a great day.